Hey there everyone. So in this video today I want to um, discuss a topic that has come up quite a few times when I'm talking to people online and it's in relation to um, overestimating what's in certain foods. And this is a topic that comes up very often, um, especially when we're trying to sort of re-establish a normal feeding pattern. Um, and it's all, you know, it all comes down to uh, the anxiety of the unknown, essentially. Um, so what do I mean by overestimating? Well, I mean, if you look around, you know, at any food label now, it's, it's ubiquitous now, it will tell you the calorie content, all of the nutritional content on it. Um, the problem with a lot of people who have eating disorders is that they don't seem to trust um, what is written on that packet. And let's say something says it has 200 calories in it, they all say, okay, just to be sure that I'm not going to be eating more than what I should be eating, uh, let's say that this 200 calorie thing is actually 300 calories. And what that means is that, you know, they're overestimating what's in this packet, but ultimately, by the end of the day, they will have drastically under-eaten what they should have been eating. Um, and, I mean, this is something that I personally did struggle with. So, I mean, I remember when I when I was trying to re-establish a feeding pattern back when I was relapsing, which obviously went unsuccessfully, I, um, I was massively over overestimating. At the beginning, it wasn't by much. So, I mean, I would add maybe 5% on what I saw in the packets. But as the anxiety started to take a hold, I began to trust things less and less to the point where I was almost, I, I think I was in fact doubling um, what I was reading on the packets. And this is, you know, this was a major problem for me because it obviously meant that I was eating half what I was aiming to eat, which was already a very low number anyway. Um, so this is something that really does need to be, you know, hit on the hit on the head really early, um, because if you give in to the anxiety the first time by saying let's just overestimate what's in this, what you'll be doing is you'll just be giving yourself permission to over uh, overestimate the next time. But because you're already not trusting what's on these labels, that anxiety will get more and more, so you will be overestimating more and more, you know, over time. So, yeah, this is something that you do really need to address, because it's not something that will just go away on its own, and it will only get worse, believe me, you know, from my experience and from what I've been seeing online. Um, so, I mean, if you're, if you're really struggling um, with you know, trying to re-establish a meal plan, you have to firstly just take what is on those packets as red and that is what it is. Um, don't add anything. And also, um, one thing that a lot of people do is, okay, they say this has got X amount of calories, but just to be sure, I will not eat the last few, t like, forkfuls just to be sure that I'm not eating more. And... This is basically the same thing. You're overestimating, um, and you're ultimately eating not what you're meant to be eating. Um, I mean, the ideal situation isn't that you're going to be calorie counting for the rest of your life, and what you should be trying to move towards is looking at a, a sort of a meal as a balanced preparation. So, I mean, a packet may say, X amount of calories, X grams of fat, X grams of protein, carbs, eat, you know, etc. But, the, I mean, the aim of most um, recovery programs is to say, you don't want to be counting the calories. What you want to be looking at is a meal that is well-rounded. So it will have the meat or, you know, the protein, um, if you're vegetarian, the vegetables and the carbs. And... You know, this is something that you need to sort of develop a skill in, um, you know, to be able to trust yourself to portion things out properly. And this is something that will only come through experience. You can, you know, you can try and calorie count for the rest of your life, but you won't get anywhere towards that goal if you don't try and take the first step 
towards you know ultimately estimating what a meal should look like and this is something that I have started to do um, and I've only really started to do it at the beginning of this year um, at you know all of last year I was calorie counting and you know, I was eating the right amount and I, I was I was I was gaining weight and I got I got to the target weight and now I've been maintaining the weight ever since then really I haven't gone down at all um, but I really I didn't like the life of calorie counting it was you know it was just unneeded stress in my life um, to constantly be thinking how many how many's in that how many's in that have I eaten too much have I eaten too little and um, it wasn't great so at the beginning of last last year, I said, "Okay, dinner. I'm going to start to estimate um, what is you know what should be normal." And in a way, it was kind of good that I'd been calorie counting for so long because I knew what a balanced meal should look like. Um, so I began to try and portion things out according to what I'd been previously eating, and you know. The first meal was very difficult. Um, I, what, what was it I had? It was um, I, can't, I, can't, I can't remember what it was, but it w it was very difficult to try and portion it out because I didn't know what I was doing. Um, I was worried that I was putting too much on my plate, but I just kind of calmed down and I thought, what would it look like if I was if it was served to me by my mum, by by anyone else? And I just did that, and I ate it, and it was fine. Um, th with me, the anxiety is always worse beforehand. When I actually get down to doing it, it's fine. And afterwards, I've stopped feeling this sense of guilt because I feel happy that I've done that challenge. Um, so I was doing that, and what was it? By the end of January, I decided to start doing lunch, the same thing. And then a couple of weeks after that, I started doing breakfast. So all, all, all three meals were being estimated by that point um, of around mid-February, end of February. And, you know, ever since then, I've, I've been doing that. And I've regained trust in myself because the proof is in the fact that I haven't changed. I haven't gained weight. I haven't lost weight. I've stayed the same and I'm completely happy about it. Um, I I feel so much stronger than I did last year, and you know I, I really hope it does continue. If you are struggling um, with you know with calorie counting and overestimating, please let me know. Alternatively, if you're trying to move away from calorie counting and you know going towards estimating um, what you're eating, please um, send me a message um, on Facebook. You can you can add me, and I will message back. I've been you know, messaging people for years now, and you know, I'm I'm perfectly happy to do that and to try and support you through it because I've been through it myself. Um, but yeah, please let me know if you're struggling, and I will try and do what I can to make it easier for you. But for now, thanks for watching.